We're now going to talk about the early detection of invasive cancers, which is something which is becoming increasingly important, and you'll hear throughout this uh, symposium. The next speaker is Dr. Lida Hariri from the Department of Pathology at Mass General, who really brings together radiology with pathology in trying to detect these cancers with optical coherence tomography, or OCT. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, first, I'd like to thank the World Medical Innovation Forum for inviting me to speak here today. I'm really excited to be here. Um, and what I'm going to be speaking about today is using high-resolution optical imaging for the early detection and diagnosis of cancer, and particularly lung cancer. So insufficient biopsy yield in lung cancer is really a tremendous problem. Um, now in the era of personalized medicine, we need enough tumor to be able to make a diagnosis of malignancy, to subtype the type of carcinoma that's present, and then also to save enough tissue for molecular testing so we can identify patients who would benefit from targeted therapies. Unfortunately, the problem is, is that the low-risk biopsy techniques that we utilize suffer from a lot of sampling error, and that includes both the percutaneous approaches and also the bronchoscopic approaches. And so in the obvious setting, if you've missed a targeted nodule, for example, maybe a peripheral lung lesion, you're not going to get any tumor on your biopsy. But what I think is a little less obvious is even when you've hit the nodule you're trying to target, if you biopsy elements like non-diagnostic fibrosis or necrosis, you may end up with a biopsy that has very little to no tumor in it, even though you've hit what you're trying to target. So there's been a lot of efforts to develop navigation techniques to help ameliorate this problem, including electro, um, I'm sorry, endobronchial ultrasound and also electromagnetic navigation. But even with these guidance techniques to help get you to the lesion that you want to biopsy, the diagnostic yield is still low for lesions that are under three centimeters, which is really still a big problem. So one method to help alleviate this particular problem is to incorporate optical biopsy in the guidance of um, lung cancer nodule biopsy. And the way that this paradigm could work is that you would guide towards the lesion of interest using whatever navigation techniques you like. You would place your needle or biopsy tool as part of standard of care. But before obtaining tissue, you would retract your needle and use a thin optical imaging catheter to do high resolution, large volume imaging in real time. You would assess these images to determine are you in the nodule, and if yes, are you near regions of diagnostic tumor. If yes, you re-advance your needle, you take your biopsy, and you have a really high likelihood of getting diagnostic tissue. If no, you know right away in the procedure you need to reposition your needle and try again in order to maximize your chance of getting a good sample. So in order to try and realize this potential, um, our lab has developed uh, optical imaging catheters that are compatible with standard bronchoscopy and can also be used with percutaneous imaging as well. So we have an endobronchial catheter here that fits within the bronchoscope working channel that can be utilized for assessing central lung cancer lesions. And then we also have an optical imaging probe that's compatible with standard 21-gauge uh, transbronchial biopsy apparatuses. And the catheter sits within the needle bore and can be used for assessing peripheral nodules. So optical coherence tomography is the technique that we use to um, try and realize this potential. And this is a high resolution, large volume imaging technique. And what you can see here is that we have images of an adenocarcinoma. And not only are we able to visualize the XY cross-sectional view, but you can also look at the XZ and the YZ view. And as the tissue comes back into focus, you can see along this six centimeter pullback, you can visualize a typical gland formation, little bits of alveolar thickening in the in situ carcinoma. There's a lot of high resolution detail you can see, and this is all done in real time with very rapid imaging. OCT also doesn't require any exogenous contrast agents, and it's really inert, so it's very easy to put into the clinical setting. So the potential impacts for OCT, I think, are multifold. Number one, we've talked a lot about using it for intraprocedural biopsy guidance in order to increase your tumor yield. The second is to use this additional virtual optical imaging as a complement to small tissue biopsy in order to improve diagnostic capabilities and potentially save this precious tumor by reducing the number of immunohistochemical stains performed, so on and so forth. Two other potential impacts are one, to assess and track tumor response to therapy in vivo, and then also to improve selection of tumor-rich samples for biobanking, which I'll talk a little bit more about at the end of the, my talk. 
So the first question, oops, I'm sorry, one too many. We wanted to answer was, can OCT reliably differentiate between lung parenchyma and lung nodules for this biopsy guidance paradigm? And so we conducted a study and we demonstrated with um, over 95 sensitivity, percent sensitivity and specificity that yes, OCT can reliably differentiate between these two things. And in the parenchyma, you can see, you know, versus the nodule, it, it's very qualitatively obvious, the difference between these. The parenchyma here has these nice black alveolar spaces with very thin alveolar walls, characteristic of standard lung architecture. And in the nodule, we have a complete loss of that architecture and instead have very small irregular heterogeneities that are reflective of the underlying adenocarcinoma, which is what this particular case was. So once we had determined that OCT can be used to help get to the nodule, the next question was is can you use OCT to help inform what's in the nodule to increase your chance of getting biopsyable um, diagnostic tumor? So OCT is able to detect birefringents from tissues like collagen, and so we can utilize this to start to identify tumor fibrosis. So in this first case, you can see we have a tumor which has a lot of dense blue staining of collagen in a trichrome stain. And when we looked at the matched OCT image, we can see there's a lot of positive signal here in the green, yellow, and red spectrum, indicating that OCT is detecting that dense fibrosis. In the second panel, we have a diagnostic adenocarcinoma, which has tumor on the top half and early stromal fibrosis on the bottom half. And the OCT nicely reflects that pattern where there's little signal on the top and there's moderate amounts of birefringent signal on the bottom. And then finally, we have a lung carcinoma, which has very little fibrosis present in the trichrome, and we can see that's nicely reflected with the uh, OCT image. So we felt very confident, and we have since done qualitative, I'm sorry, quantitative studies to really demonstrate that OCT can indeed reliably differentiate between fibrosis and tumor. So the next question we had is, can we use OCT as part of the diagnostic paradigm as a complement to tissue biopsy? So we developed diagnostic criteria for um, the common non-small cell lung cancers, including adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and also poorly differentiated carcinoma. And we demonstrated an over 80% sensitivity and specificity in being able to diagnose these subtypes using OCT interpretation alone. And just for comparison, your uh, sensitivity when you are doing an endobronchial biopsy where you're able to visualize your lesion, so basically your best case scenario, is only 74%. So our numbers here on with OCT alone are really quite encouraging. And we'll be doing future studies looking at OCT with biopsy assessment to see if that increases diagnostic capability. Finally, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the potential of using 3D optic biopsy to help inform on um, patient um, clinical management. So this was a patient who had a lesion resected suspicious for lung cancer, and it turned out to be a benign hamartoma. And so as you look at the architecture of this lesion, what you can appreciate is it has a very lobulated appearance. It's very homogeneous. And around a lot of these lobules, you can actually make out the epithelial lining around them. And this architecture for a pathologist is very reminiscent of what this lesion actually was, which was a benign hamartoma. If we were able to employ this in the clinical setting for a patient like this, we could potentially completely um, avoid having a patient undergo a surgical procedure by providing a bronchoscopic assessment that this is benign and it doesn't need to be resected. So there's a lot of potential here. So coming back to the potential impacts of OCT, we've talked a lot about using OCT for intraprocedural biopsy guidance. Our next steps in this is to use OCT um, and compare in a two-armed study OCT um, guidance versus non-guidance to demonstrate that we really do get increased diagnostic yield, um, which we think we are very hopeful that these results will turn out positively based on our data so far. The next thing we also want to investigate further is using OCT as a diagnostic complement to small tissue biopsy to see if this does indeed aid in the diagnostic capability in this very limited setting. What we're also quite excited about is the potential to assess and track tumor response to therapy in vivo. And I think our real benefit here is that we're able to visualize fibrosis so nicely, which is something that no other imaging technique is able to do right now in vivo. So we can distinguish tumor stroma from viable tumor to give a much more accurate representation of how much viable tumor is actually remaining over the course of therapy. 
On that same line, um, we think that using OCT to improve selection of biobanking could be incredibly potentially helpful because we're able to identify this nasty fibrosis that contaminates a lot of these samples and makes these precious resources basically useless because all you have is a bunch of fibrosis and like 10 tumor cells. So we think all of these could be really potential opportunities for collaboration with industry. And finally, I'd like to just acknowledge everyone who's been involved in this work, and in particular, um, my mentor, Dr. Melissa Souter. And thank you guys for your time. <laughs>